Marvel's The Transformers, issue number 61. Stan Lee presents Transformers, The Primal Scream. For the first time ever, the origin of the Transformers. Attacked in mid-teleport by three Decepticon assassins, the Autobot pretenders Grimlock, Jazz, and Bumblebee, and the Micromaster Rescue Patrol find themselves not on Earth as intended, but deep within their own homeworld, Cybertron, and face to face with their maker. most sacred places with your unworthy presence. On your knees, trespassers. Prostrate yourself before your creator, your living god, Primus. Huh. Some creator seems to have dozed off. Think we dumb, eh? Silence! Kneel, unbeliever, or face his righteous wrath. Grimlock, do us all a favor and just get down. Show some reverence. Reverence? Me not believe I hear this. Bumblebee, Jazz, you not buy this, do you? Maybe Decepticons drugged us, made us hell, hell, see our god. Grimlock, old buddy, listen. I know it sounds crazy, but I think this is on the level. We really are in the center of Cybertron. This really is Primus. No, no, he lies. He say he is Keeper, say he been here from dawn of time, created to watch over our god. He make wall open so he can walk through. He speak with voice like thunder. Tricks, just tricks. If what he claim, if this is Primus, I say, prove it! Tell me how I was created! You demand much, but then perhaps you have the right to learn of your heritage. When you have seen and heard, you will understand why Primus must ever slumber, and how his sacrifice protects us all. Let us look beyond time's veil to a universe in its infancy and the birth of the Transformers. And while potentially planet-shaking events are set in motion deep below ground, the leader of another underground movement, Emirate Zaron, paces the halls of Autobase, wondering if the beleaguered Autobot resistance has suffered one of its worst setbacks. Any news, Zaron? Nothing good, Doubleheader. I've spoken to Optimus Prime on Earth. Wherever Grimlock and the others went, it wasn't there. How are the repairs to the Trans-Time Dimensional Portal coming? If we can get it operational, we should be able to complete their journey. Slowly. Luncheon nearly totaled it with his sword strike. We need more time. Time is just what we don't have. Wherever they are, they're in terrible danger. It's possible they don't realize the Decepticons are there too. Any idea where we are, Bloodshed? No, and quite frankly, Octopunch, I don't care. All that matters is that the Autobots we were ordered to kill are probably here as well. Jazz, Grimlock, and Bumblebee must be terminated. Right, can't have them Autobots getting cocky, can we? Indeed not, Stranglehold. To the Autobots bidding to retake Cybertron, our targets have become heroes, symbols of victory. The hope they have fostered must be crushed. They're alight. And up ahead. The age of the gods of light and darkness was all but over, and fledgling life in all its myriad shapes and forms had begun to spread throughout the cosmos. But before Primus could take his place within the Omniversal Matrix, one final task remained. He had to destroy the last of the Dark Gods, the Chaos Bringer, Unicron. No easy task, even for one as mighty as Primus. Unicron existed purely to destroy and had become very good at it. Injured, his energy form discorporated, Primus took the battle to the Astral Plane, 
and seemingly fared no better there. With his life alone all but extinguished, Primus fled towards the real world, Unicron close behind him, eager for the kill. Too eager. Instead of materializing in their energy forms, Primus led them into lifeless asteroids, imprisoning their essences for all eternity. Primus's intricate snare was complete. In time, Primus learned not only to live with his sacrifice, but also to psionically shape his metal prison into a world he called Cybertron. Primus realized that his ability to do this meant the threat was far from over. So he began to build his last line of defense. Warriors he dubbed Transformers, able to transform their bodies into the likenesses of machinery, weapons, and vehicles. He hoped, in time, they would grow mighty enough to destroy Unicron. Primus instilled his life essence into a genetic matrix of vast power, so that new generations of Transformers could be created and given life below. Genetic matrix? Wait a minute. You're talking about the creation matrix? You mean our sacred life force is the essence of Primus? Indeed. The matrix is the one thing Unicron fears. The one thing that can destroy him. You talk like Unicron know all this. How? As Unicron shaped his prison into a planet, one with the ability to transform into a likeness of his old self, so the sight of freak between the two old enemies became apparent. Their battle was never meant to end in stalemate. It was fated long ago that one or both must die. As Unicron searches ceaselessly for Primus, feeding on worlds in his path, so must Primus slumber, until he judges his creations ready to do battle in his stead. Because of the Civil War, that time has not yet come. Whatever happens, Primus... ...but must not be awakened. Unicron... Would what? Keeper! You have to tell us how deeply he slumbers. I have a nasty feeling it's gonna get noisy down here. Just your screams, Autobot. Just your screams. Yeah? See how you scream? Grimlock, no! We're too close to Primus to risk using blasters. A stray shot, a ricochet, may condemn our whole race to death. Primus must sleep on, even if it costs us our lives. A different planet, but once more our story unfolds beneath the surface. This time underneath a grassy mound in New Jersey that disguises the base of Scorbinox Decepticons. Though for how long they remain his Decepticons seems open to conjecture. Decepticons, listen to me. I have the situation well in hand. There's no call for alarm. I can't believe! Madness! Call yourself a leader? Won't stand for it! Who elected you anyway? Step down! Easy for you to say, Scorponok. You didn't get shot and nearly killed by him. Starscream may well be a fellow Decepticon, but he's also a habitual traitor. A self-seeking menace we can't afford to have around. Twice now he's tried to destroy us all. Twice he's almost succeeded. So what do you do when you finally get him at your mercy? Do you destroy him? Do you rip him limb from limb? No, you welcome him back with open arms. Three strikes, we're out. Watch your tongue, Mindwipe. What I do, I do with good reason. I want Starscream here, where I can keep an optic sensor on him. Until we get the promised reinforcements from Cybertron, his considerable power, now augmented by a pretender shell, will bolster our depleted ranks. I trust Starscream no more than you do, but, for the moment anyway, he stays. Believe me, I have him on the tightest of leashes. Will you trust my judgment on this? The angry silence that follows is all the answer the listening Starscream needs. He recognizes seeds of dissent and rebellion, and knows exactly how to sow them correctly so he can reap the rewards. Cybertron.
Hey dudes, I'd advise some serious chilling out before we have to get yike. Oh, I'm a man. Can't have you damaging my snappy new pretender duds. You do that, you eat floor, big. Hey. Prowling fool, your warrior heart is tainted by an idiot's tongue. Perhaps I shall remove both for you. They're getting slaughtered. The Decepticons are killers, pure and simple. And while we're holding back, they're not. At this rate, it's only a matter of time before they overpower and destroy us. Are you proud of your creation, Primus? I doubt it. Even clothed in this fine pretender shell, I'm still the weak, indecisive robot I ever was. Help me! Are you an angry god? One who demands sacrifice? Must I condemn my friends to death because of this Unicron, who may or may not exist? Many questions, but no answers. Having died once, it's kind of hard just to accept our fate. Ratchet sacrificed himself to give us life. Will dying again save our world? No, I can't, won't just accept that. It's up to us to shape the future, but not passively, meekly. We will fight to prosper. With all due respect, Primus, it's time your creations stood on their own feet. Sea Watch, you read me? This is what we're gonna do. Die. Ah. Uh, you are dead, Autobot. Dead. That's just it, Bludgeon. That's how I was thinking. Like I was already dead. Not anymore. Sea Watch, he's yours. Thanks, Bumblebee. Just what I've never wanted. Huh? You know how to water ski, Bludgeon? Me neither. Ah! Enjoy! One down. What the Bludgeon? Not worry about him, fish face. Worry about this. Ah, no! I am Octopunch! I am unbreak- What is that old Earth saying, stake out? Something about pride, Red Hot, and falls. No! Stupid saying, but uncommonly apt. Too down. I'm sorry, where are my manners? Wall meet stranglehold. Stranglehold meet the wall. Yay! Three down, and not so much as a twitch from Primus. Three down, yes, but three out? <laughs> Shell took the brunt of the impact. Losing it can make this count. Grimlock! Huh? Though the blast is not powerful enough to penetrate Grimlock's titanium steel armor plating, the ricochet proves more than enough to shock Primus awake. <laughs> A slumber of eons is heralded by a scream that shatters audio sensors and rocks Cybertron itself. We, we're done, but... But nothing. Complete the sequence and send them to Earth now. And in less time than it takes to tell... Earth, but maybe we doomed whole of Cybertron in getting here. Got to warn others of Unicron. Ah, uh, come on, Grimlock. I thought you didn't believe all that stuff. I reckon no one but us heard that scream. Beyond the fringes of known space, it hears. It recognizes its old enemy. And though it is replete, its terrible hunger sated by the inhabited world it has just consumed, it is now eager to eat again. It is chaos and fury given form. It is Unicron. It turns in the direction of Cybertron. Next issue. The only thing that can save them is the thing they haven't got. The Matrix quest begins.